Lord Jesus, we come and worship you. And this very morning, once again, we come before you and respond to you. Lord, you deliver everyone. Lord, you give us your insights and you speak to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. So this morning we will talk about chapter 17 of Deuteronomy. So actually, the book of Deuteronomy is talking about the preparation work before the Israelites went into the promised land. But actually, there is a very there is a characteristic that the book of Deuteronomy actually the content of it has been mentioned beforehand. But in the book of Deuteronomy, everything is repeated again, and that is about the commandments of the law for the Israelites from chapter twelve. Then we talk about we go into the commandments of the Lord, and all these commandments and laws are. God is a significance. And all these commandments and laws also got the common points and common things. For example, it's talk about the uniqueness of our God and we should worship him alone. And also it's talking about the place of worship, which is very unique. And also the commandment tells the Israelite that Actually, it is subject to the decision of man whether they have the blessings or the curses. And it's talking about the choices. And today we come to chapter 17. So again, it's talk about in terms of our life, how are we going to worship our God? So the topic today, so that is to lift out our life which will not go right or right or left. And the verse 1 to verse 7, the first part, uh, be careful, not turn to the idols. So in verse 1, do not sacrifice the Lord your God an ox or a sheep that has any defects or flaw in it, for that would be detestable to him. So here we are told that what kind of offerings that we gave to God and what are the things that we cannot give to God, especially the animals which have the flaws, which have the sickness, which have the defects, and God found them detestable. Actually, the word detestable, it means it caused people to throw out. So it means that God really was, is sick of all these uh, offerings. But you know, it is uh, quite beyond our understanding. So because you say everything is created by the Lord, right? Then how come say that God find all these things with flaws and, uh, and defects detestable? Does it mean that God really hates these kind of animal, animals with sickness? So I tell you, actually God does not hate all these animals. Actually, this sentence is spoken to those who offer the sacrifices. Actually, the sacrifices with all the defects and flaws have been mentioned in the previous scriptures. So when they got mentioned about this, that man could not offer all these kind of sacrifices to the Lord, actually it's mentioned in the book of Exodus. So in the very first in the very first Passover that you need to commit sacrifices, the offerings without defects to the Lord. At that very night that the Israelites were facing the calamity. Because why if they didn't offer the sacrifices to the Lord, then their elder sons of the Israelites will be killed like the Egyptians. So it is the beginning of the salvation. So that's what the Israelites re responded to this law. So, of course, in that time, it, nearly all the Israelites could observe this commandment. So that's why they could be out of uh, Egypt. But here, once again, in Leviticus, and God repeated the same commandment again. So you need to offer the sacrifices without any defects, then God will find them pleased, find them pleasing. So, of course, at that time, the Israelites could, com could uh, observe this commandment. But here in the book of Deuteronomy, it's repeated again. But here, uh, God really stressed it a lot. How come God suddenly became so serious about it? Does it mean that God was too demanding? So that's why when we look at this chapter, 
we have to look at this chapter with the prophetic perspective. In the book of Deuteronomy, there are a lot of reminders which comes with the prophecy, which comes with the prophetic meaning. So in other words, uh, Moses can got the insights that uh, he knew that the human being will fail one day. He and God also know that also know that man will fall to the right or to the left one day. So that's why he's so serious about the teaching again. So the first point is uh, be careful not fall to the idols. So actually, when we offer all these sacrifices with defects and flaws, it's the same with, uh, uh, with uh, worship the idols. So we know that when we believe God, we worship God alone. So because God is the only one. But for the idol worshipers, they, uh, they worship different gods. And actually, their rituals, actually, is a kind of repetitive word. There's no feeling. There's no emotion at all. But what about our faith, our religion with our God, that we have our relationship with God because he's a living God? So when we, can meet, when we offer all the sacrifices with defects, what does that mean? It means that we show no fear for God. And God said no about that. But... We still try to touch the bottom line of God. Hey, you thought that God would not see it. Hey, you see God would not realize it. So, you know, I've been offered this kind of sacrifices for the Lord for many years already. So this year, there's no difference. I try to offer this kind of animals with divas again. So it's just the same when I worship the idols, they would not know that I offer this kind of sacrifices anyway. So you know, this kind of mentality, actually it means that you fall away from the Lord. Actually it means that you treat God as the idols. And then from verse 2 to 7. So you treat the idols as God. In verse 2 to 7, that's a word which has been repeated many times. That's the word evil. So the original language of evil means a calamity or disaster. So we can interpret it the other way. In verse 2, if a man... Okay, if a man or woman living among you in one of the towns the Lord gives you is found doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God in violation of his covenant... Or maybe you can put it this way. It's found doing calamity in the eyes of the Lord. What does it mean by the evil, the calamities? What, what are they about? They are referred to worshipping idols, worship the gods, worship the sun or the, the moon. Of course, there's no separation between evil and calamities. There's no difference between them. So here we might think that we are told that not to worship the idols because worshiping idols is evil. But in the eyes of God, what is that? In the eyes of God, it is the consequence. It's the consequence of sins. It's the calamity. So we did, we ignore the calamity. We ignore the consequence of sins. Yet God is very clear about it. When you worship idols. Actually, the calamity will come. Actually, your nation will come to the downfall. So that's why God is so serious about it. Don't ever worship the idol. When you worship the idol, it means that you bring along the calamity to your nations, to the whole land. So we have no feeling towards sins. But when we come to the calamities, we might have lots of feelings. All the policies, all the social policies that we make. So that is a kind of the preparation for the calamity in time to come. This is, this is man. We have feeling to the calamity, but we are indifferent to sins. But in the eyes of God, it's the same. They are the same thing. So God would like to remind us so that we would not go to the destruction. In verse 4. So 
this has been brought to your attention that you must investigate it thoroughly if it is true. And it has been proved that this detestable thing has been done in Israel. So the detestable thing refers to the word evil. Then what do you need to do? Then in verse 5, then you need to take the man or woman who has done this evil deed to your city gates and stone that person to death. But at the same time, you need to give a good testimony. You cannot uh, sentence this person only by one testimony, by one witness. But if it is true, then you need to purge the evil from among you. Purge, the word purge means burn away. Purge means burn away. We cannot leave any residue of sins. In other words, we need to deal with sins completely, get rid of it completely. In other words, we need to get rid of all these possible consequences of sins, get rid of them. So in this background, it's talking about the nations with God as the governance. So the law in the Bible is the same with the law on the earth. But of course, today we will not kill people like that. Yes, we need to treat the sin. We need to deal with sin in the same perspective. We need to understand the consequences of sins. We need to be careful that somehow we might fall away from God and turn to idolatry. Somehow in our religion, in our faith in the Lord, do we still worship God somehow? Do we still worship idols somehow? Do we take God as the idol somehow, sub unconsciously? Sometimes, somehow, unconsciously, we turn away from God as well. And sometimes, when, when I prepare, I also meditate, how do we worship God? For example, in the tithing, in terms of tithing, I know that Christians need to give tithe to the Lord. My very first time to give the tithe to the Lord, I was so fearful to the Lord. So, of course, at that time, because I was still a student, I only gave God $10 or $20. But by the time that I have gave the tithing into the, into the tithing bed, I really told God that, God, I really commit my only tithing to you because I put my trust in you. But when I grow up, and do we sometimes forget the tithing, but we are still indifferent to it? Or maybe we use, you take the tithing as a kind of ritual. Or maybe I heard that, I also heard that some of the brothers and sisters are very worried that they might forget the tithing. So that's why they use the auto, they pay by the auto pay. But what I'm not saying that you cannot, but what is the motivation? So you take it as a kind of ritual. So it means that you do not really commit your tithing just as the, uh, the Israelites. For example, my first time to partake the communion, I really meditated on it. I was so serious about it. But when I came to the online worship, I was alone at home. So were I fearful to Lord when I uh, partake the communion at home? So brothers and sisters, gradually from time to time, our worship and our faith in the Lord turn to a kind of ritual. So that's why we need to be very careful. Don't turn to the idol worship so that the sin will not come to us, so that the consequences, the disaster will not come to us, so that the roots of the, the sin will not grow in our lives. And the second one, verse 8 to 13, the second, be careful. Be careful, not turn to be self-centered. In verse 8, if cases come upon your cause, come before your cause that are too difficult for you to judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuits, and or assaults, take them to the place the Lord your God will choose. Here we are told that in the city, in the time to come when we go into the promised land, Israelites among you, there will still be some conflicts and confrontations. Yet it's true, today you are in the wilderness and all of you are very united together. 
because all of you are so united together to go into the promised land. But I tell you, this kind of unity will not last forever. Somehow there will still be conflicts and confrontations. And you know, when we talk about the conflicts and confrontation, it's talking about my, our self-centeredness. It's talking about I'm right and you are wrong. But when we come to this situation, how are we going to deal with it? And God said that we need to take them to the place the Lord your God will choose. So brothers and sisters, when we come to the conflicts and confrontations, lawsuits and all, all uh, assaults, what are we going to do with them? So our first direction, two words, our first way to deal with all this is... So of course, every one of us are, is Christians, we talk about love. But in the face of the conflicts and confrontations in the cell group or with the co-workers, how are we going to deal with them? So, of course, we will not strike, we will not uh, hate one another, we will not assault one another. But I tell you, what we do not do is that we will not bring the cases to the place of God. Actually, we will hide all these things in the dark corner of our lives. And then we live in our anger. Or maybe we use our ways, our own ways, the ways of flesh. We gossip, we judge, we slander against them. But we never go to the place of God. You know, we tend to be self-focused and self-centered. We tend to think that we are right and the other people are wrong. But here in the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 9, we are told that go to the priests who are the Levites and to the church who is in office at that time. Inquire of them and they will give you the verdicts. And in verse 10, you must, you must be as according to the Lord will choose and be careful to do everything they direct you to do. And in verse 11, as according to the law, do not turn aside from what they tell you to the right or to the left. Just now I told you the message in Deuteronomy is prophetic. Here we are told that don't turn to the left or to the right. And here we are told about the nature of our humanity. We tend to turn to the right or turn to the left. So in the conflicts, we might turn to the way that we are indifferent to it. We suppress ourselves. We don't deal with it. Or maybe we turn to our our own flesh, that we argue, we fight, that we quarrel with them, and we come to the debates to see what, who is right and who is wrong. We turn to the right and we turn to the left. But here we are told that not to turn to the right or turn to the left. And also, just how we mentioned, the society with God as the governance. At that time, the priests, the Levites, so you, we have to understand that at that time, the kingdom is talking about God's kingdom of divinity and, the, and, and, and politics. Even though the Levites are the religi religious leaders, but at the same time, the priests are the political leaders. They got the right to deal with the politics of the kingdom as well. But today, we are in the church. We are being the Levites. We are being... Well, every one of us, all the believers are the priests, right? So do we take up this authority? And what is this authority about? That is the authority of discipleship that today. When we come, when we come to the conflicts and confrontations in the church, in the same way, we have to take up this authority of discipleship. It's talking about both sides. Being the Levites and the priests, of course, we need to take up this authority to shepherd, to disciple, to release the truth in all the relationships, to let the truth become the burdens. But at the same time, when we come into the conflicts, so it means that sometimes we might not have a very good or smooth relationship with people. Then we need to let go of our self-centeredness. Don't ever resort to our own ways. We need to be discipled. We need to bring all these issues to our cell leaders. Because, for example, you have the problems with your couples. And sometimes we might think that when we have the problems with our couples, then we can deal with them at home. But does it mean that you can deal with them? Does it mean that you can uh, make your couples happy and then the issues is settled? Or does it mean that it is simply the pattern which you have been repeating, especially to the guys? So we need to be shepherded. 
we need to be discipled in the place that God chooses, and we need to come to the to our authorities. Then only by then that our self-centeredness will be removed. Then we can surrender our sovereignty to our authority, and whatever our authority tells us, we need to believe that it is from God. And in verse twelve, it's very serious. The man who shows you contempt. If you don't listen, then you will be put to death, and you must. Per- and then this evil will be purged from Israel. So actually, this sentence is repeated as a verse seven. So, in other words, God does not allow this kind of ease of sin to be mingling, to be among the Israelites. God doesn't want any of this self-righteousness or self-centeredness in His people. In the eyes of God, they might think that well, it's not a big deal. Well, whatever the problems, I can deal with them. I can use my own way. I can use my so-called self-righteous way to deal with to deal with them, but God doesn't look in the same way. And God will like every one of us to bring all kinds of conflicts and and confrontations to the Lord. Don't walk our own way. So, brothers and sisters, be the cell leaders. Then we need to take up this authority of the cell leaders. We need to touch the lives and the relationship of the cell members. We, being the cell members, will bring all our problems and difficulties to our cell leaders and to God. Don't ever think that given that the problems are dealt with, then that's okay. And God here tells us that don't turn to be self-centered, and the self-centeredness is the evil, because the self-centeredness will bring along the calamities to the whole community, and the third part. So verse fourteen to the last verse,、uh, be careful, don't turn to the world. So here again, there's a prophetic message in verse fourteen. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, and have taken possession of it and settled in it, and you say, "Let us set a king over us like all the nations around us," so just now we said that the Israelites were were in the country of God as the governors, and actually God is their king. So in God's governance, actually God is intent to be their kings to lead them to guide them. Actually, that is the path of God's blessing. Take God as their only king. But here in verse fourteen, we are told that when you enter the promised land, when you enter Canaan, then you will say, "Let us set a king over us, like all the nations around us." So, brothers and sisters, this is a kind of turning away from the Lord. That is a way turning to God. You know, the world is doing like this. You know, look at the world. The world has this kind of system. So, because of the system, there's a sense of security. How come we are different from the rest of them? How come the other nations got their own kings, got their officials, got their own laws? How come? What about us? How come we have only the God who is invisible? How come we are different from them? How come the other nations got all these things? How come the other nations got this kind of system? Everything comes into the right place. What、well, they've got the different laws and commandments. They've got the sense of、uh, sense of security. They've got their own army, the troops. They got their、uh, their own palaces. How come we don't have? This is the world, and this is of this is a kind of crowd mentality. Is saying that well, their system, the system of the world, is even bigger than God. But what does it tell us? Even though you might have this kind of thinking. Okay, if you really want to set a king over you, then come to fifteen. Be sure to appoint over you the king the Lord your God chooses. Don't don't ever choose the one other than from your own brothers. It means that since you are the Israelites, then you need to choose your own brother from the Israelites. Don't place a foreigner over you. Because they do not understand our laws, they do not understand our God. In verse sixteen, and the king must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself, or make the people return to Egypt to get more of them. 
So in the words, it means that you cannot treat the Israelites as the slaves or to sell them back to Egypt. And don't ever associate yourself with Egypt, with Egyptians. We need to remember that we've been delivered out of Egypt, out of the slavery. Don't ever go back to the land of slavery. Don't ever go back to the world. And also, don't ever go back to the world. Don't ever inquire, acquire the horses for your own sake, for your own benefits. Because why? God say, you are not to go back that way again. And that way is the way of of the world. And also, don't take many wives or concubines so that his heart will be led astray. Here, it's very special. When you look at it, when you read this part, when I read it, I come to the thinking that there's a king that is King Solomon. Before entering the promised land, and God has reminded the Israelites that they will come to this point of destruction. When King Solomon finished building the temple for the law, the first thing that he did was he, take, he took many wives and concubines. He also got the chariots of the Egypt, and he also associated with the Egyptians. He also took the Egyptian princes as their wives, and this is King Solomon. All the way he's been walking the path of uh, fearing God, but when he came to the climax of his spiritual life, and then he fell away, and he turned to the world. So brothers and sisters, don't ever think that you can keep following God without turning to the right right or to the left, and somehow we will deviate from God. Somehow we will fall away from the law, and this is the world, and this is the temptation of the world. That is the way of the world. That is the laws of the world. So today, when we worship God, when we serve God in the church, do we use the, well, the way of the world? Do we use the, the way of the management of the world? Do we try to look for the super way to govern the church? Then you can secure the peace for the long term, secure the uh, the blessing for the long term. Sorry, we cannot use God's. We cannot use the word, the way of the world. What does it mean by not turning to the world? In verse eighteen, it's talking about the book of laws. So here we are told that when the king takes the throne, then he needs to write for himself on a scroll a copy of his law. And in verse 19, he is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to reverence the law, his God, and follow carefully all the words of this law and these decrees so that he will not consider himself better than his brothers and turn from the law to the right or to the left. Then he and his descendants will reign a long time over his kingdom in Israel. Brothers and sisters, in our faith to the Lord, that what is the way that we will not turn to the left, to the right? What is the way? What is the way? When we read this passage, so actually we are told that a lot of ways will turn us away from the Lord. That is idol worship. That is the work of Satan. That is our self-centeredness. That is the world. But what is the way that we will not turn to the right, to the left? That is we need to take God as our God. In the first part, we are told that we need to take God as our God. So it's just like the Ten Commandments on our hearts that we have to know that God loves us and God creates us and He is our only Heavenly Father. So we need to always keep this first commandment to our hearts and take God as our God. Every time, any moment of our lives that we need to come to the place that God chose. Because why somehow when we turn away from the Lord, we even did not realize it. So that's why we need to be discipled. And also for the rest of our lives, we need to read the words of God. Because the words of God are to help us not to turn to the right or turn to the left. This is the ultimate way. For example, in the morning, we come to the morning devotion. We ask the words of God into our midst. So that in the areas that we might have deviated from the Lord, that we can turn back to Him. So, brothers and sisters, today we need to make a decision that we need to let God to help us, let God help us to come back to Him in the right path. Shall we all worship God together? 
So brothers and sisters, shall we all stand together? Then we worship our God together.
Let's say to God that we follow Him with all our hearts. Lord, this is our prayer. Through praying in tongue, our spirit connect with you, and we say to you once again that we follow you. We only follow you, and we only connect with you. And we want to say to you that you are the only, the Creator, the Father God who loves us. God, we thank you that you love us so much. Lord, who we, who are we? A lot of the times we are not able to focus only on you. We have so many weaknesses, but you use different ways to help us to align with you. Lord, once again today, through th the word of morning devotion, through kings, through authorities, we need your words and your rules so that your people don't turn left or don't turn right. Lord, we thank you that we can come to morning devotion today and that we can embrace your words every day and we can come to you again. Help us to be aligned with you. Lord, we give praise to you. We give praise to you. We give thanks to you. We thank you and we say to you today that we, we will listen to you again and we choose to align with you, to align with you. Brothers and sisters, in morning devotion today, the scripture reminds us that we, the sacrifice that we have to God, is it ritual? Our love to God, has it become a ritual? Our tithing, has it become ritual? Let's let the Holy Spirit remind us our hearts to God. Has our heart become ritual to God? Holy Spirit, we quiet ourselves in front of you. Please help us to see our hearts, our hearts to God, and our sacrifice to God, our love to God. What kind of situation we are in? During my prayer, the Lord allowed me to see and receive. I see some brothers and sisters. They keep on saving money. They keep saving and saving. They keep on checking on their bank accounts. How much money do I have? When they keep looking at their bank accounts, they have a big struggle in their hearts. Some brothers and sisters, they are struggling with their finances. And when, and it's difficult for them to tithe. But for other brothers and sisters, they have a lot of money in their bank accounts. But whenever they have to tithe, and they look at the, mon the amount in their bank account, they really struggle. For them, it's difficult for them to tithe. But today, I hear God saying to us today, My children, bring your hearts to me. When your, when your hearts are aligned with God, all your sacrifice, including your time, including money, you can get rid of this kind of struggle. Lord Jesus, thank you for shining light in our hearts. 
Lord, even we don't know that we have astray from you. We keep thinking our worries are normal. Because I've worked so hard to earn this money, it's hard for me to let go. Lord, if we don't have money, how do we tithe to you? It's difficult for us. Lord, but it turns out that our hearts has turned towards our own feelings. Lord, it's so easy for us to live in self-focus. God, thank you for shining light on us so that we can be delivered today and we have freedom today. Lord, you say not to turn left or right, but just to follow you. This is the final answer. Today we are we're willing to turn our hearts to you again. We are not going to follow two gods. We are not. We don't want to run towards our feelings. We want to run towards you. This kind of struggle is really tiring for us. We're willing to turn our hearts back to you and not turn left or not turn right. We're willing to follow your rules and your and your laws. The ultimate way is to follow you. Not because we need to follow any rituals, but because your laws is life to us. When we follow you, when we follow your laws, we have freedom. Lord, today we have freedom. We will be delivered today. We're running towards you, God. We praise you. We thank you. Lord, please give us a heart that fears you. We're not doing rituals in anything. We're not treating you like an idol. We are really willing to be connected to you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we worship you with all our hearts. Lord, we worship you with all our hearts. Longing for you. Lord, take away all the rituals. Lord, we will follow you with all our hearts. Verse 8. If cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge whether bloodshed, law, suits, or assault, take them to the play to the Lord your God will choose. Brothers and sisters, we always focus on ourselves in our family or in marketplace where we have conflict in our relationships. Are we willing to admit that we actually need help? We're very self-centered and uh, we have self-pity. And all these are going on in our hearts and we are not able to resolve. Are we willing to go back to the place that God chose? Right at this time, we need to pray and we need to ask for love and trust. We need to go back to our cell leaders and to believe that our cell leaders are, is someone who God has appointed to help us. And to go back to the place that the Lord your God has chosen. Let's rise up and pray for ourselves. And we open our hearts and we seek God. Thank you that you gave us priests and the Levites who take care of us. Lord, this is your protection to us. This is your help to us. Lord, we're willing to lay down 
to understand that it's not just it's not enough that we only seek you, but also through the cell leaders and the Levites and the priests that you chose for us. We're willing to accept the way that you help us. We're willing to trust. We're willing to trust our authority and the cell leaders that you cho chose for us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we come to you, to your presence. Lord, we're willing to believe you. I know that amongst us, that that is the relationship with your spiritual parents and with your cell leaders. You have in your hearts, you have conflict with your authorities. You say, say to God that yes, God, we, there is something, some conflict between me and my cell leaders. What can I do? How can I seek help? If this is you, I ask that you put your heart, put your hand on your heart because God is going to help you and going to heal you today. I hear that. God is saying to the brothers and sisters who are facing this difficulty today, He's saying to you, my, ch my child, I can see your difficulties and I can see your struggle. My child, I know that you want to follow me and I know that you want to trust your cell leader. But when you face conflict and challenges, you feel very upset and you feel misunderstood. You feel that you're not being supported. You even think that perhaps your cell leader doesn't love you or doesn't trust you. Lord, you see my brothers and sisters' struggles and their difficulties. Well, please take away this big heavy weight and to remove it from them. Lord, you're speaking to us today. And all these struggles and all this misunderstanding is the work of the evil, the devil. Lord, I, pr I ask that you release us today and you deliver us today and you open up brother sister's eyes so that they can see so that they can see the reminder and the and the encouragement from the cell leaders they are apple even though it's hard for them to understand it is apple even though they feel misunderstood but god please open our brothers and sisters eyes and take away all the attack from the evil one and all the lies. Please take away all the misunderstanding. I hear that God say to all my brothers and sisters who are experiencing these struggles, my child, I love you. My child, I love you. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Lord, keep on asking you, do you trust me? The Lord says, I am, I am here. My child, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward and choose to believe. Choose to believe. Be brave. And Go talk to your cell leaders and your authority about how you're feeling. Lord, your love be pouring upon all these conflicts, all these challenges that are preventing them from following their cell leaders, all these difficulties and struggles be taken away right now the Lord of God be melting our hearts and melting all these struggles. Lord, please continue to help 
my brothers and sisters. After morning devotion, I encourage you to send a message to your cell leader and to tell them how you feel and invite them to speak upon your life. And you say that I choose love and trust. If you're willing, I invite you to lift up your hands. I see a lot of brothers and sisters, they are willing. Lord, you see that they're li they've lifted up their hands and their willing hearts. Lord Jesus, you put the powerful cross between them and their authorities so that all the, all the works of the evil be falling at the feet of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you be the Lord of their relationship. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We need you in our lives. We need you. And we need your words. Lord, only your words can help us. And your truth and your rules and laws can help us turn back to you. Lord, we're willing to come to morning devotion today and to receive your words. Lord, we see us, we see how much we long for your words. And your words become our strength and our help and our directions. Lord, our brothers and sisters, let's, let's pick up your Bible. Let's hold up your Bible or your mobile phone. And put the word of God upon your heart. And you pray to God. Lord, your words become my strength. With a, voice, with a voice that you can hear, you ask God to help you. You're willing to follow his words and you're willing to be longing for his words. Lord, you hear our prayer and we see your words as precious. You see our hearts longing for you and you give us, give us more strength to follow you, not to the left or to the right. 
I want to give everyone a challenge, f starting from today. Every time you read a morning devotion scripture, you choose one verse. God asked the king of the time to copy his scripture. Today, we do the same. We, we use one verse that we have received. We write it in a mobile phone and we collect one verse that really touch your heart every day. The reminder that God gives you for the day, you write it down in your mobile phone and day by day, bit by bit, we write it in your heart and your mobile phone. If you're willing, I ask you to lift up your hands. I see everyone is willing. Let's give God a big hand. God, we're willing to put your words into our hearts every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, let's lift up our hands. Lord, in your name, we proclaim in, in our brothers and sisters' lives, including those who are listening online, if in our hearts we have anything that uh, we have turned to the left or the right, we ask God to take that away from us. Any self-centeredness, self-focus, um, we're focusing on our feelings. We, we ask that power to leave us in Jesus' name. The influence from the world and the and we are being attracted to the to the world in terms of fame or money or the things that have enticed us away from God we break that in the Jesus of na in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus i bless my brothers and sisters to focus wholly on God and to put all the laws and scriptures in our hearts and we Worship our God every day. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen.